Good evening. I am Reverend Judy Ann Davis Young, and I welcome you to Wednesday evening Bible Wisdom. I am going to do the invocation this evening and a short reading and ministerial intern, Claire Somerville Binion, who's also a practitioner, will bring the message. Today's message is about light. Whether we know it or not or honor it or not, we are all the light of consciousness. So I invite you to just relax and close your eyes. And let's go within to the temple of greatness. And it is in this place that I just take a deep breath and recognize that the grace of God has gone before us every day of our life. And up until this moment, it has made a way for us on this Wednesday to arrive here safely, whole body and mind. As the sun rose in the east, it did so without I ever having to question or think about it. And as we started our day, the world spun on its axis without our ever having to give a second thought. And that divine grace, the truth, the wisdom, that thing we call it, be it God, Buddha, Krishna, or Yahweh, that supreme power orchestrated every motion for all of us. And I am just awestruck at the vastness of divine truth that can do for all of us at the same time all over the planet. God kept everything in order, every traffic light, every step we took, every breath we took, our conversations, the food we ate. It was all divinely guided by that one living power, that one source, that created all of everything from within itself. And it's from this place that I can just joyfully and in total surrender, let go and let God. For what I know is my humanness, our humanness, it'll drift, it'll, we'll hold our attention on something for a moment and it'll drift. And what I know is God's attention never drifts. It never wanders. It never forsakes us. It never leaves us. It is always living, breathing, and present in the now. So I know right here, right now, that that nowness is unfolding and it has allowed us to keep this divine appointment to show up in full surrender and hear with our inner ear, feel through our heart and know beyond any logical understanding that God just is. For there is a light of consciousness that we will explore tonight that guides each one of us day by day in every way. I recognize it. I honor it within myself and therefore I honor it with each one present. And I say thank you, God. Thank you for always being there even in our humanness, when we forget and we complain or our mind drifts into what we don't have, I just say thank you for always replenishing our cup, 
filling it to overflow with fresh air and sunshine, love and compassion. I'm so grateful. So I get my bloated nothingness out of the way and I release my word knowing that God has got all of this and so much more in the palm of its very being hands. And I allow my heart to be fully open, fully surrendered to accept and recognize that God is and I am an emanation a light cast into the universe representing the uniqueness, the diversity, the beauty, love, compassion, joy, and grace of God. And for this, if there's anything I've said that you can agree with, please help me anchor this prayer by saying we let it go we know it is so, and together we say, and so it is. Amen. Ashe. <coughs> this evening's reading comes from the Science of Mind textbook, and it comes from the glossary. And the glossary gives this description of light. In flashes of illumination, this inspired the inspired have seen into the very center of reality and have brought back with them a distinct impression of what they have seen and felt. A glimpse of this reality illuminates the whole being with a flood of light. Every mystic has had in this experience. Jesus was the greatest of all mystics and once, at least, after a period of illumination, his face was so bright, his followers could not look upon it. In moments of his deepest realization, the great mystics have sensed that one life flows through all and that all are part of that life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. From light in the glossary section of the science of mind. Welcome to the light that we honor, we acknowledge, and we see in you. And at this moment, I'm going to call up the lovely Clara Summerhill Binion, practitioner and ministerial intern. Welcome to all of you tonight. It's such a joy to be here with you and such a gift for me to have been able to partner with Reverend Judy Ann. At the end of last year, I said to Reverend Doug, I want to work with Reverend Judy Ann and I want to help her with the Bible Wisdom Service on Wednesday night. And she agreed to let me do that. And I just want to thank her for what I've learned and the inspiration she's been to me um, as I've watched her and learned from her as, as I'm on this path of learning to be a minister. And I'm always so happy to be here. I'm always hopeful that I can say something that might make a difference to someone here but I'm always the one who grows the most as I spend time before this service thinking, meditating, and trying to open myself. What is there that needs to be said? This, this service, this third Wednesday of every month, we've been exploring together the wisdom of the Bible. The, it's interesting, in our tradition, we honor all paths to God. And we mean that. We see the truth in all paths. But there are some things that kind of specifically touch us in this book that we call the Bible, the, the Hebrew Old Testament, 
the Christian New Testament with its stories of Jesus and so on. And we don't accept this as truth, as many religions do, that I kind of think that if we were to look at the Bible and say, now that's true, that would kind of be like taking a picture of the ocean and then showing that to someone and saying, this is the truth of the ocean. Now, there's no way that one picture can, one glimpse can capture the majesty of the ocean. And if, if you're like me and, and love the ocean in all its moods and sunsets and sunrises and the waves and all the different beaches, um, and yet those glimpses can help us. And that's how I see the Bible, the stories in the Bible, the, the allegories, the metaphors, the examples um, can support us in our own personal search for truth. And that's what we've been trying to do in, in this time together. Be before I start talking about light and butterflies, which is what I'm going to talk about tonight, I want to talk to you for just a minute about our Wednesday night services. Um, I know many of you come every Wednesday and, and have experienced the different experiences that we have. Um, on our first Wednesday of every month, we have Justin's 12th Dimension, which is an amazing audio-visual experience with pictures of nature and times for meditation and music and teachings from great teachers. Um, the next Wednesday, we have our chanting service, which is a completely different kind of experience where we join together in singing ancient and modern chants. Um, I, I can just lose myself in that sometimes, that kind of energy of actually being, just being present in the moment. And then we have our, our Bible wisdom service, um, which you're a part of. And then our, the last Wednesday of every month we have, or the fourth Wednesday, we have Exploring the Mystical, which is a, a topic I love. I don't know if any of you ever wondered, what does that mean, mysticism? And mysticism refers to, rather than talking about something, we're experiencing it. And so the Bible, if we get confused and think it's about something and that it's important to know what it's about, we kind of lose sight of what is the experience that it's trying to create for us. And that's what happens in that, that fourth Wednesday. And then the fifth Wednesday, on the months that we have a fifth Wednesday, we have Tize, which, again, a wonderful participatory experience of music and singing and listening. So just recently... Our, um, the leaders of the center, Reverend Doug, called together the people that are involved in the Wednesday night service and asked us to join together to vision what might be waiting to be birthed or to come forth for the Wednesday night services for next year. Um, and... We, we just started this process, but I kind of wanted to share it with you for a couple of reasons. One is, um, the f we started with focusing on what we want to create for you. And I don't know if people in the congregation always know how much energy your minister and the, the people on the board like put into that. Like they're constantly thinking about that. What do the people in our congregation need? How can we best support them in their journey, in their path? Um, is what we're doing working? We need to, to change things. Um, are the people that need comfort being comforted and upheld? Are the people that need to be inspired and made a little bit uncomfortable? Are they being nudged to, go big, go, to live a bigger life? All of that, always asking that. And... It's so fascinating for me now in ministry school because I'm thinking about what if someday I'm called to start a new work, to open a new church or to serve inside a church that already exists. What is it I want to do? What is it that's going to be important to me to provide for those people who come to me searching and on their path 
to awakening, to fulfillment, to creating the lives they want. Um, and so I'm always thinking, what do I want to create, and then how am I going to do that? So this experience, just now, for our Wednesday night service, um, is, is deep for me, a chance to look at that. So I want to ask you, I just kind of wanted to give you guys the opportunity as I, before I started talking tonight, to talk about that a little bit and ask you, what is it you want? How do these Wednesday night services feed you, support you, um, give you what you need? And I'm just inviting you and encouraging you to talk to me, talk to Reverend Judy, talk to Reverend Doug, write it on your connection card on... Uh, Sunday, if there's one of them that you really like, if there's something that you wished or looked forward to or thought, wow, I wish sometime they would do this. We are in a space now of creativity. And one of the things I love about being involved, being involved in this center and on this path to ministry is we are trying to do what we're telling you to do, believe it or not. We're telling you, you can create the life you want. You can open yourself to spirit. You can be inspired to what's available for you, what's possible. You can create what you want to create. And we're doing that as well. Um, so I'm just asking you to kind of keep that in mind. You know, is this exploration of the Bible together, you know, something that is meaningful and powerful for you that you'd like to continue to look at some of the stories as we've looked at, stories from the Old Testament, stories from the New Testament, the spiritual truths from the Bible. Um, is that something you'd like to continue? Or are you, think, are, are you thinking it might be time for something new? You know, might it be interesting to undertake in a study of all the different religions that there are out there and what all of those offer and what we can learn from them? Ernest Holmes, of course, studied all the religions and many of their truths and teachings show up in his teachings. Um, you know, we might do something more interactive. Um, I sometimes thought I'd like more of a workshop or class setting where we share and get to know each other, maybe where more people participate. Um, you know, there, the, the possibilities of what we could do on these Wednesday night services are wide open. And one of the things we're kind of excited about is, you know, our new sanctuary. Our project for the new sanctuary is coming. We're going to be taking out all these chairs that are fixed in place and have movable chairs so we could have uh, the chairs in a circle and join in that way. We could have uh, all kinds of different opportunities for things we could do. So I just didn't ask you. If, if you're willing, think about what you'd like. Even if you say, I love what we're doing already. Let's just keep doing it. That's helpful. Because as leaders, we're trying to open our minds to see what are all the possibilities. Are we serving the people who come here? The people who join with us in community who are on this path of awakening and opening? Or is there something more we could be doing? Um, I should say that my phone number's on the back of the program, but, you know, I should say along with that that Reverend Judy can attest to this. I'm, I'm, like, terrible at returning calls. And I blame that on my many years as an attorney. And everybody who called me was always mad at me. But i got to get over it, okay? So um, I tell people, if, I, if you call me and I don't answer, don't make it mean anything. Just keep trying. Um, you can call me... Um, email the center here or whatever. Share your, share your thoughts. Be part of this. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about light. And we're going to start by watching a little short video. If Joe can work it for me, because I didn't get it to him in, like I'm supposed to ahead of time. But let's see if he can make it work in all his magic.
What an amazing thing, isn't that? For me, the entire story of the Bible is the story of our transformation from our caterpillar selves to our butterfly selves. It's a story of leaving behind old, cramped, limited ways of thinking and living and moving forward into this space of freedom, possibility, choice. We see this over and over again in the Bible, that story. Think of the stories we started this year with, the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Yes, it was a perfect world, but guess what? Boring. No risk, no adventure, no chance to screw up and learn something from it. They chose to leave that behind, to leave that cramped, small existence behind and go out into the wide world where anything could happen. They were like caterpillars before. Plenty of food, all their only job. You know, the only job a caterpillar has, eat. And then when they're ready, shed their skin, create the chrysalis, transformation. Then look at the, one of the main stories in the Old Testament, the story of the children of Israel. Again, leaving the limited life of being slaves in Egypt to go out into the wide open wilderness in search of the promised land. Sometimes they were upset about that. They actually complained to Moses. What are you doing? We were slaves before, but at least we had food. It was better before. Why'd you bring us out here? Going out into the wilderness was like their time of being in the cocoon, ready, as they prepared for something else. Then, of course, in the New Testament, Jesus came. And over and over again, he begged us, the people he taught, and now us today, to see reality in a new way. You know, it, it's my personal belief that Jesus didn't believe anyone needed to be saved. And certainly not that he came to save anyone. I think that's kind of a distortion of that message. His message was... It's all possible. You're all living in the kingdom of God right now. You can leave that caterpillar reality behind and burst forth into something new. As he did that, as he returned to that theme over and over again of leaving that old, limited tight, confined, cramped space of limited beliefs. As he urged us to leave that behind, he came back again and again to the image of light. Sometimes I like to imagine, you know, I think we all do, imagine the universe as a person, and that person's thinking, and I imagine that, that universe slash person thinking, what's the best thing I could use to teach them? And always coming back to this idea of light. Light is something they can relate to. The Bible begins with the images of light, the creative power of light. And when we think of light, think of, you know, when the light comes on, everything's different. You're in the dark room. You think you know what's there. You think you know what's around you. The light comes on, and it's a completely different view. If you've had the experience of driving, at night as the sun comes up and everything's black. You just see the road ahead of you and you can imagine there's nothing there because you can't see anything. And then as that light dawns, see out to the horizon, wide open spaces. I asked Reverend Judy Ann to read that quote from Dr. Ernest Holmes, our founder. So he talked about one of the 
ways of thinking about light. And I'm going to talk about three tonight. And the first one is the one he focused on, light as illumination. Light as that which allows us to see reality. When Jesus said, I am the light of the world, part of what he was saying was, I am the one who came to show you how things really are. You're not stuck inside that cocoon, that chrysalis. You're not trapped in there. And you're not limited to caterpillar reality. Transformation is possible, an entirely new way of looking at things. He, we have so many stories of Jesus healing the blind. The blind person came, Jesus touched them, and their eyes were open and they could see the world. And what Jesus was trying to tell us is there's another way of living that's as different from the way you're living now as it is from being a blind person to a person who can see. From being in the dark to having the light come on. This is what Reverend Judy read us. In flashes of illumination, the inspired have seen into the very center of reality and have brought back with them a distinct impression of what they have seen and felt. Now, see, sometimes what happens, and I think what's happened with many religions in the world that have gotten confused about the Bible, is that they forget that that's what the Bible's about. It's people who have had those flashes of illumination. They have experienced the divine. They have seen the perfection of all that is. They've seen their oneness and experienced and felt what it feels like to know that they live in a place of love, an amazing place of love and possibility and joy. And they see and experience their connection with all that is. Those illusions of separation fall away. And they come back into the world, the everyday world that we live in. And they're so overwhelmed with that amazing experience they've had, that the most important thing in the world is to share that with other people. And so they try in every way they can. We call that ineffable. Like it's impossible to put it into words. And maybe you've had experiences like that where you think, oh, I just can't put it into words, but it's so real anyway, and you want to keep trying to. That's the first way to look at light the light of realizing that and seeing that and trying to explain it to other people in a way that they can get there too. So parts of the Bible are about people sharing their experience of that. Then they say, well, this is how I got there. I don't know if this is how it will work for you, but it might. Try it. And then, of course, what happens is those that path becomes a the rule that you have to do that, right? We have somebody maybe who fasted, and then they had an experience of the divine, saw the light, as it were. And so then what do they do? You have to fast. That's the rule. You have to do that. You see how that distortion has happened? It's an easy mistake to make. If I've done something and I had a most wonderful and incredible experience, then I'm saying to you, you better do what I did. Well, that what I did or didn't do isn't what matters. What matters is your personal experience of knowing that oneness, that light. So that's the first thing I want you to remember. When we think about light, illumination. Light makes things visible. Light makes things clear. Light lets us see the perfection of all that is. The second meaning of light is light as energy. This is the way light is used in the creation story, and it's interesting even in physics now. You know, the Big Bang, the light, that's out of, everything was created out of that. Um, and, and even on a much smaller and more personal scale, the light of the sun shining on the leaves of a plant is what transforms matter from one form to another. So there's that energy form of light, that powerful 
form of light. So on the one hand, light allows you to see things. On the other, light is actually a form of energy. Um, and, and Jesus, interestingly, was using it in both ways. I come to bring light in the, in the context of helping you see clearly, and I'm the energy of light that's actually changing things. Again, think of the sun shining and actually changing the minerals and so on from one form of matter into another. It's interesting to kind of look at those, those two. I'm always looking at balancing. And, and we really have a yin and a yang, a positive and a negative form of light in those two. The, the passive yin, the accepting, the yielding, the surrendering, the going with the flow side, that's the light of illumination. When you open the door, does it take any effort for the light to fill the room? No. It can't stop itself. All it has to do is allow it to fill. But in the terms of the creative energy of light, it's the, it's the yang, the, the active, the forceful, the dynamic, the choice side. So those two sides of light, a wonderful balance between those two. Now the third way to look at this idea of light or the meaning of light, well, I'll tell you a little story where this came to me recently. I've been having all these problems with my back, just my back hurting all the time. So I was treating with my own practitioner about that. Yes, even those who are on practitioners, we still need practitioners too. And my wise practitioner asked me to, you know, focus on the place in my back where it hurt. I know none of you ever, like, have any back problems. I'm probably all alone in that, right? Um, she said, focus on that and ask it what it wants to say to you. This is like a technique to kind of get out of our rational mind and so on. And so here's what my back said to me. Lighten up. Lighten up. Now, what, what did that mean? Stop being so serious. Like, lighten up. So there's this other meaning of light, which is like ease. Light, easy, fun, letting go of the burden. Jesus even said that, you know. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. He didn't want us to be all burdened over, straining our backs, like carrying with all the stuff we were supposed to do to try to make him happy or make anybody outside of us happy. Um, so we have that, that sense of light, lightness, ease. You just picture like dancing, you know, like ballet dancers, just so light on their feet. I think when Jesus said, I am the light, he meant that too. Like I, he came to bring that, that sense of freedom and peace of mind, that lightness. Like how light would your life be if you didn't have all your worries? How am I going to pay the bills? What if I don't get a job? What if nobody ever loves me? I'm getting old. What if I'm a burden on people? What if I don't do this? What if this happens? We just carry that around on us, and it's pretty hard to be light with that, isn't it? What if when Jesus said, I am the light, he was talking about that too? You can have that. You can have the light of illumination where you see things differently. You can have the light of energy, the creative energy, and you can have that lightness, just the lighten up, lighten up message. All right, now let's, let's look at the, the butterfly story. Oh, this is kind of my own parable for you today. Jesus talked in parables, and part of the power of a parable is they were about common everyday things that everybody saw. Seeds growing and people, someone losing a coin in her house and searching until she found it. Um, normal everyday stories that serve the purpose then whenever that happened again, would remind the person. So that's my, my parable today is about this butterfly. 
so that, you know, whenever you see a butterfly, maybe it will remind you of the truth. So we all know there are three stages to butterfly life. You know, you may, you may have learned this in elementary school. We have a, the caterpillar, and then we have the cocoon or the chrysalis. The cocoon is what they call it if it's a moth. The chrysalis is what they call it if it's a butterfly. But, you know, when they're hanging upside down inside that hard thing, and then, as we saw, the third stage is the butterfly. Now, so many things to learn from this, and so many things that this example tells us about this idea of light that Jesus came back to again and again in his teachings. So first of all, they're so different that if you didn't know better, you just wouldn't even think they're part of the same creature. You know, that, that worm, that hard thing, and then this delicate, beautiful thing that flies. Now, many people in the world are in the caterpillar stage. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, of course, because if, if that's where you are, that's the perfect place to be. If you think of babies, for instance, and children, who, what are, what are their lives about? Eating, growing, learning how to navigate in the world. But, unfortunately... Many people, as adults, stay stuck in that place about surviving, about being safe, about being small, about blending in. Like one thing about a caterpillar is camouflaged. The whole point is to blend in so when it's on the leaf, nobody can see it. I, I mean, I have to admit, I'm, I'm in this mode pretty often, and in some areas of my life, just trying to survive, trying to get by, just focusing, oh, what's important is my next meal, eating, distracting myself. Um, I don't want to make, I don't want any risks. I don't want to change anything. That's where I am. And one of the interesting things about caterpillar reality is they don't even know that butterfly exists as a possibility. And when I'm stuck in caterpillar mode, I forget that. I think this is all there is. Just playing small, just being a worm, just fitting in, not taking any risks. And even kind of imagine myself as a caterpillar, I might see a butterfly out there and think, oh, that's great for him or her. Oh, she's got all that. She's beautiful, free, but I'm never going to get there, right? Any of you ever had that experience where you're kind of stuck in your caterpillar and you're looking out there? So that's the first stage. And again, you know, the truth is we're where we are in our journey. And the important thing is to awaken and to see it, and not to make ourselves wrong or blame ourselves. So it's not about that. It's not about saying, you're stuck in caterpillar reality. It's time for you to break free from that. No, when we're there, that's where we are, and that's where we're learning and growing. At a certain time in our life, we may be ready to enter the next stage, the chrysalis, the cocoon stage. And one of the most interesting things to me about this is that scientists you know, biologists, people who study that, have, have opened those cocoons at different stages along the way. This, this monarch butterfly that we watched is in the, inside the chrysalis for between 7 and 15 days, depending on the weather and so on. So scientists have wondered what's in there during those different stages, and they've opened them up the chrysalis and looked in there. Now, at the beginning... It's definitely still a caterpillar, you know, in the first day or two. At the end, you can see the butterfly. Guess what's in the middle? They open it up. Basically, it's what they describe as black goo. Black goo. Can't see a caterpillar, can't see a butterfly. So they're transforming. Now, 
I don't know, do you ever have those experiences where you're living in the black goo? I do. <laughs> I'm thinking, what is this? I'm supposed to have this magnificent life. Everything's supposed to be possible. God is all there is. And yet, what do I feel like? I feel like I'm, I'm in the goo. And, again, the problem is I make it wrong. I say, this shouldn't be. This shouldn't be. Rather than recognizing it as part of the process. The caterpillar can't become the butterfly without going through that black goo stage. We have, you know, great uh, religious leaders and, and mystics of the past have called that the dark night of the soul that many, many of us go through on our journey. Things seem to be going fine for a while. We're happy in our caterpillar life. Now we're in the black goo, the black night of the soul. And when we're in there, it seems hopeless. We're so cramped. We're so limited. When that chrysalis first forms, it's solid and hard. So we watched as it gradually softened as the first step to allow that butterfly. So the butterfly didn't have to break out of something that was still hard. The first step was for it to, to soften. And then we may reach that state where we say, I can't stand being in the goo anymore. I'm ready. I'm ready to break out. And that's when we start pushing against those things that felt like limits, that chrysalis, and it starts to give. Look at this little video because you can tell that it's not like just the easiest thing in the world for that butterfly to get out, was it? It had to work to push and push its way out and get out. And it's interesting. It, you, it, you couldn't really tell in the time-lapse photography, but when it first comes out, the wings are still really small, and it has to wait a little while while they fill with fluid until they get to their, their full size. They're not fully formed inside that inside the chrysalis. I don't know, I could imagine a butterfly. See, we think, oh, that's all I want. Just let me out, let me out. I'm ready. I'm ready for freedom and lightness and beauty. Let me out of my chrysalis. I don't want to be in here anymore. But I think some of us, even as that's happening, we're saying, oh, what was I thinking? I had it pretty good as a caterpillar. I don't even know anything about this. I don't know how to fly. This is all brand new. I don't know if I want to do this or not. You think any of us do that when, we, when we're breaking forth into a brand new kind of experience? You bet we do. Well, maybe you guys don't. I do. I'm like, oh, no, I changed my mind. I don't want to do that. Um, what's, what's the gift? What's the blessing? as you go through those, those stages, to welcome and honor each one of them wherever you are. If in some stages of your life, you're still caterpillar, you're still learning how to survive, how to make it, how to get around. Those parts of your life where you're inside the transformative space of that chrysalis where it feels so cramped, so limited, or you feel like you're just in the black goo, or if you're in those parts of your life where you're breaking forth, ready to say, whoa, wow, what is this? So light, being so light, floating, bringing beauty, and so on. So here's what I want you to leave with and remember. Let the story of the butterfly remind you of how light works.
light is always a cycle and a balance. The, the caterpillar passes through the darkness to the light of the new butterfly existence. And of course, in our lives as human beings, we don't ever do things just one time. We're constantly going through cycles and taking on life's experiences on a bigger and higher level. Be open to that illumination of light. That was Jesus' challenge to us when he said, I am the light of the world and you are the light of the world. Be ready to see things in a brand new way. And then be ready to be the light that lets that happen for other people so that others seeing your light can ask themselves the question, is there another way to look at this? Second, the energy piece of light, that your light actually changes things. The same way the sun's light shining on a plant changes that from a seed into a sprout, into a plant, into fruit. And then the third meaning of light of, as ease. Lighten up. Nothing else. I want you to walk out of here saying, oh, I'm going to light, I've lightened up. I feel light. I'm letting go of those worries, the strains, the pressures, the fears, because all of those are our limited beliefs. And you know, it's why we keep coming. It's why we come to church every Sunday and return and why we do our own spiritual practices is to stay in that place of lightening up, of knowing it's all good. We live in an amazing world of good. We live in a universe that always says yes, that wants us to have whatever we can imagine. If we really live in that place, we can let go of that weight, that fear, that heaviness. And then, as a way to help you remember that, the story of the butterfly, showing us how we transform, what it means when we've entered that place of knowing, when we let the light come on. When we let the light come on, we see the whole picture, the whole cycle, every possibility, every opportunity. We see the risks as gifts and blessings. And we live in this place of awe and wonder. And who can't feel a sense of awe and wonder when they see a butterfly. The story of the butterfly balances so perfectly the light and the darkness. The, the, the shift from being in that cramped and confined space to a space of wide open possibilities. The other thing I want you to remember about the butterfly story is wherever we are is perfect. It's not s nothing we should be doing or nothing we need to try to be doing. It's, it's we allow that to happen. And it's right and perfect time. We don't resist it and we welcome it. We're all on this journey together of preparing for what I call our butterfly reality. The truth of who we are, beautiful, free, light, a source of joy and gladness for everyone around us. Um, and that's what we're doing here. We're awakening to that. We're becoming aware of it. We're letting that light flood into our minds to say, this is the truth of who I am, and I accept it, and I welcome it, and I love it, and I say thank you for it. I want all of you to know that I see you as the truth of who you are. As practitioners, this is what we do. We stand in the truth. When you're afraid, when you're fearful, when you're feeling small, when you think the good that you're waiting for will never come to you, we stand there knowing the truth. 
Sometimes it just brings tears to my eyes as I sit with someone and see what they can't see for themselves. It's a gift and an honor to share this journey with you, this journey of awakening, this journey of becoming aware. I give thanks for that. Namaste. What a brilliant metaphor. Um, so interesting, Miss Claire, that that is being used in, a, in an area of my life as I move from my caterpillar stage to the emerging butterfly. And what I will say to anyone out here who can hear me, either in the sanctuary or in cyberspace, if you feel like you are moving from caterpillar to butterfly, don't even attempt to do it by yourself. Get some coaching. Get a practitioner or a life coach. Someone to remind you, because when you're in the black goo, it's real easy to forget. And at this time, I'm gonna call our ushers forward. And as you prepare your gift, I ask you to put your hand over your heart and hold that gift there. I am real clear about the sacredness of holding our gift, whatever it is, because it is also light energy. People make a lot out of money, and I remember Claire and I speaking, money is just another form of energy. So if it's an area in your life where you're challenged, just ask yourself, where's the energy stuck in your body? Because it's not stuck out here in the universe. There's lots of it everywhere. All you have to do is look around and you'll see it. So please hold your hand over your heart and repeat after me. Mm. I give from a place of knowing that all that I send out always returns tenfold fought piled high pressed down and flowing with ease for I live in an abundant universe with a great big God and I trust in my divine source. And so it is. As the ushers circulate down the aisle, I invite you to come into the center aisle. And we're going to do a prayerful benediction. And I'm going, I don't have a microphone. Well, I guess I can carry this with me. This is real. <laughs> I just make up stuff. They're used to me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. How many of you participated in the World Day of Service? I know who some of you are. Thank you for your service. If you were here for the concert Saturday afternoon. That concert was part of my moving from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And there were many times that I knew I was in the black gooey stuff, but on the other side, there was a butterfly that floated out of here Saturday evening. And for that, I am truly grateful so, as we wrap up this evening, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to ask, starting to my right with Debbie, please speak one word that you would like prayer for. Because what I know is when we give our need or 
our concern a voice, we take away the power of fear. So speak whatever that word is. And the only thing I ask is that you let it be about you because that's the only person that has power to change your life is you. And the only life you can change is yours. So if you have a concern for health, money, love, a place to live, just give us one or two words. And I'm gonna take your words, all of our words, and amazingly wrap it into a benediction prayer. And I will start with forgiveness. Career. Self-confident action. Purpose and fulfillment. Employment. Love. Gratitude. Expansion and joy. Health. Patience. Trust. Place to live. Place to live. Humility. Humility. Healing. Vitality. So here we stand. All of God's children illuminating from the inside out, knowing that our careers, our jobs, our self-worth, our self-confidence, our health, our humility, our vitality, our love, mm, trust, all of these things where we live, the energy, the remembering and the reminding. We speak it into this circle and we breathe life into it and allow it to float out of this sanctuary into the ethers where the universe always says yes, that there is enough love, that the perfect job, the perfect career, the perfect love, vitality, humility, all of that is ours because we have spoken it so. We have given it a voice. It cannot avoid us. We have created a space within our very being for it to manifest, for the light of Christ consciousness to shine in through and as it. I speak this word for all of us. And if I did not mention your exact word, I speak it through my intention of wholeness, of perfection, of love, of trust, of grace for each person in this circle and for all that we love. For what I know is, whether we are in steep in caterpillar mode or flowing in the, with the grace of a butterfly, we're right where we need to be. So today, tomorrow, and the day after, we just keep gently allowing our wings to fill up with ink, to become lighter so that they can rise and lift us up from the heavy blackness of the conversations that we hold, the limiting beliefs, the scarcity, the lack, the ego, and anything that keeps us from being full from the inside out. So I say this with humility and with love. I love you. I see you. I know who you are. Go in peace, my child. Go in peace. I let it go. I know it is so. And together we say, and, and so, so it is. is. Amen. Amen. And if you're comfortable, hug at least one other person. Make that too.